Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of League of SC Reviewers. Three best friends getting together, finally, after the long wait, to talk about what we love to talk about, which is talking to other people. Isn't that ironic? Anyway, I'm here with some of my best friends in the world. Linda Mako! Hello, everybody. It's so nice to see you, Tyrone. It's so nice to see you, Ben. I've missed you guys so much. It's like, oh, it's been hurting. I'm so oh glad gosh. to be back. And Aww. I'm really glad to be be here today. And let's not forget the notorious, the one and only, Ben Diesel. Hey! hey. So good to see you guys again. Uh, Linda, I've been so jealous of everything you've been doing the last couple of weeks. Very true. It's just like an adventure. Not even that, it's the whole cabin thing, but we're going to get into that today. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, I'm, me too. My name's Ty, and we're going to talk about so many things in this show. I want everyone to get really excited. But before we get into a whole plethora of stuff that we're going to talk about, mostly just catching up, we're going to go over some of the comments that we had in the last episode. In a subject I like to call, where is the love? Where is, where the, is the love? love, the, love, the, love, love the love, the love, the love. love. Linda, you mind sharing some of that we got in the last episode? Yeah. So this is the feedback we got from our last episode, um, episode eight, um, from Engut Engut 40 He says, geez, you guys are really pushing the wordplay to smuggle in your fruity words. <laughs> Thank you, Engut Engut 40 We appreciate criticism. Oh, yeah. And then um, uh, P-B-T-M-I-T-A-S-O-L. Is that... It, right, correct. Um, says during Dr. Uh, Tyrone Wells' SE sit down, I couldn't take my eyes of the lovely Linda Mocker, immersed intently mm. in the discussion. She's such a sweet soul. I don't practice SE, but enjoy the content the three of you guys put out. Thanks for the great energy and enthusiasm. Nice. Oh, thank you. PBT. And um, I just would like to recommend uh, starting taking up SE. It is fun. Then you'll be a part of the, you know, fun in another way. <laughs> and then uh, read Nice Wonder, also known as read nice wonder. Curiosity, <laughs> um, says, great show. Thank you, Reed. That's so nice. And then um, Jeff Wrench says, I hate the secret word game. Any chance you could drop it? <laughs> Hey, that's a great question. I'm thinking, uh, let's do a change of pace because I'm always up to new things. Let's try a different game today. Uh, let's do a game called Goals, all right? Goals are pretty simple. We won't interrupt each other during the show, but what we will say at the beginning of the show what our goals are that we need to complete by the end of the show. And they can be about anything you want. For example, my goal by the end of this show is to level up to level two. those levels i've been grinding recently i'm like about level seven right now but i'm going to push myself up to that level 20. there's one big boss battle that i think i'm going to prepare myself for but i got the right equipment my stats look good i'm ready to do this level 20 let's go linda what's your goal my goal today is to encourage people to go out and try se even if they have never thought of it before so please oh. give me feedback on that like in the comment section like did it work like if no. you've never thought of it did you think about it this time and That's my goal. I love it. Ben, what is your goal? Oh, my goal for today is to teach you guys a new Afrikaans word. <laughs> awesome. I can't wait for that. And, and we'll try to make sure it's not a rude one. <laughs> We're a family-friendly okay. show, after all. So, yeah. No promises. <laughs> guys, I, I, I had, or I, I've got a secret about Reed, which he shared on the, the SE Discord. Excellent. And it's actually weird cordial curiosity comes from it's literally just synonyms for his last name nice wonder nice cordial wonder curiosity oh. i was like mine load that's a lot that's deep that's really that's really deep. deep that's not bad I, I like that yeah i think i was there during that discord maybe we should plug the discord thing hey why not se discord um, so we have a Street Epistemology Discord. If you guys want to join the chat or learn more about SE or want to engage in role-playing sessions, you're free to drop in anytime you want. Just search for Street Epistemology when you're in Discord. And uh, I don't think we have any like ins or out. We've had uh, everyone from straight up atheists to apologists, really anyone that's friendly to having a really cordial conversation. 
and exercising the curiosity can come by and join the chat. Also, if you like uh, just SC in general, but don't necessarily make content, but you want to give your feedback, I'd also recommend the SC League Messenger Group. Uh, it's pretty easy to get to, and more people are joining every day. And I think it's really cool. In order to get into that group, uh, give either me, Linda, or Ben a shout out on uh, Messenger, and we'll be free to add you in, and we can talk more about uh, how to talk to people. Okay, you guys, we're into the real heart of the show, catching up. This is an extended session that I like to call Ben, Linda's, and Ty's Excellent Month. <laughs> All right, Ben. I know. I know. Linda's got the card, so we're gonna. We're gonna. You and me. You and me are gonna. <laughs> <laughs> ben, how was your excellent month? My month has been super interesting. Um, what when it was about six weeks ago? I started something which they call Alpha, and it's it's this course for um, Christians with questions. It was developed by a guy in, in the UK, Nicky Gumbel, and uh, as part of the one of the guys at the South African Secular Society, of which I'm a member, suggested that we should check this out uh, so that we can, number one, expose ourselves to ideas that we might not necessarily subscribe to, which I think is always a good thing, and also to, um, to maybe promote some critical thinking uh, among the people who attended the course. And it's been very interesting. It's, it's actually become one of the highlights of my week. Uh, very nice people. It was good conversation, very, got very philosophical, which I enjoy for some weird reason. Started enjoying the last couple of weeks. So that's been awesome. Um, they're having, they've got a camp uh, this weekend. So I'm actually going to ask the, the one pastor there if he'd be happy for me to do some interviews. So if that works out, I'm going to be super psyched. Set up a table, see how it goes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you just say set up a table? I said table. It's going to be really cool. Yes. That's going to be really, really cool. Uh, what kind of, uh, I, would, I shouldn't say props, but what kind of tools do you have for the table? Um, have you thought about I'd like. I still need to get like a, a second camera, but I'm thinking um, of maybe crowdsourcing that. I know a couple of people who might be able to sort me out. Just get another GoPro and uh, yeah. No, and it's, go for it's it. going to be. Yeah. Because I, unfortunately, um, in South Africa, we've this. Uh, September has been very bad for going out and recording September and October. It's been so windy yeah. and there was a school break. So I haven't even had the chance to go out for like a couple of weeks at least. No. So I'm itching. Even in the States right now, it's getting really, really cold. And I'm thankful for every day that it's kind of warm out. But even when I went mm. outside yesterday to do some interviews, it was not enough foot traffic for me to even justify setting up. I like the idea of like the whole, you know, your way of doing it where you just stand up and you have the camera on you because I feel like you could do that almost anywhere. But for me, it's kind of a commitment, like where I set up, the time that I invest in setting up and then sitting out there hoping I can catch some <laughs> catch people. So, yeah, I definitely feel like we're getting towards the winter is coming <laughs> era. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, Tyrone, have you thought about um, trying that with the, just a little camera, like the harness thing? I, like you just said, like... Yeah. So when I first started doing SC, I didn't have a table set up. I was doing it yeah. kind of like in the Anthony oh. style where I didn't have a camera even set up. I would have my cell phone. <laughs> I'd have my cell phone and a microphone uh, app playing and I'd just go up to people and talk to them. And I was able to have a really good conversations and that helped bolster my confidence. So it was yeah. like a non video aspect of that. And there are some early attempts of that on my YouTube channel. But uh, for the most part, I, I like the table setup. Um, only because the stand-up session kind of stresses me out because I feel like not only am I having a conversation, but I also have to keep the person talking to me because it's very easy for them to be like, okay, well, thank you very much, walk away. But like when they sit down oh, yeah, like that. to having like a mm. conversation and that's one less thing that's on my mind. But I think it'll be really cool to hear from Ben his ideas of what it's like doing SC standing up since he's so well-versed at that. You've probably been doing it for about a year now versus doing it on a table. I'm really interested in that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have a captured audience, so it might not be the most unbiased view, but I'm going to see how it goes. If it, if it works well, I think I might actually try it, go and set up in a nice park over the summer and see how it goes. And Christians with questions, what's that? I mean, is that a Christian-led event, or is it like a secular 
free thinking about? No, it's 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 hosted by a church, so um, it's a very conservative church. I was actually amazed. Um, one of the pastors asked to speak with me, and we had a a separate lunch chat, and he was just like the nicest dude. Well, maybe to be expected, but also in the way his own beliefs are very very liberal. Like I did not know that there are people in that church who who subscribe to those those specific views sure and uh, so much so that if if he took what he said and just removed the the god part from a lot of it uh, i'd be 100 percent on board so it's that at least for me was was something which was made me think a lot to see you know even can can christianity and, and that's kind of his point of view christianity needs to be reformed uh to be more receptive to the problems that the world faces at, at this point in time and the idea is interesting to me, but the question mm-hmm. I have is um, the baggage that comes along with that, can it can it be justified? Mm-hmm. That's a completely different conversation. I think I could be busy on that for a couple of hours. Mm-hmm. That would be good. I also think, just as a, as a tip from my point, if you're going to do SC with people, if you're doing SCs with actual pastors versus the people that go to the church and then there aren't pastors, maybe not as well-versed, do you think you'll gauge the expectation that you have of like the kind of goal that you might set for yourself as part of the SE conversation? Do you understand what I'm like I'm saying? Like for a person who just goes to a church, you might ask them, is like faith a reliable way to come to like a true conclusion? But for like yes. a pastor, you might have like a unique opportunity to try a different goal of like um what are like some of the benefits to secular thinking or like could you see a value to doubting everything? Like maybe you could privately ask pastors different things because they might have the other answers kind of down pat. And they may not really mm. have a lot of critical thinking to it. Mm. But if you ask it's like, hey, what's is critical thinking valuable? Is questioning everything valuable? Are there things that we shouldn't question? Why is that not a good thing anymore? Yes. Like it might be our conversation actually naturally went in that direction, and it was very very cool to get his points of view. At the end of the day, um, I actually shared a couple of SE videos with him because Ooh. the challenge he faces, he wants to uh, get rid of fundamentalist ideas in his congregation. And he sees that as probably one of the biggest challenges that he faces. Um, so I, I explained that this idea behind SE is to, you know, bypass those defenses and get people to honestly and critically analyze why they hold beliefs. So. I, I don't know if I convinced him. I'll I'll keep uh, going in that direction because I think that'll be amazing if, if he could get some benefit out of it. If and you for, could... for me, both of what you both both of you guys just said was just like honey to my ears. The <laughs> whole you know getting getting oh, the no, watch um... ears. <laughs> <laughs> what honey like sweet like <laughs> <laughs> if. <laughs> <laughs> like getting to the, the pastor to think of, of different things and not get into the defending of the belief maybe or like that I, th- I thought that was like brilliant and then the whole like um what you just said ben <laughs> i won't repeat it but yeah both of those are like oh right on just wanted to say that nice uh, one other random question ben is the churches in south africa typically divided based on like um on racial lines because even in here, particularly in USA, you'll have things that are called like black churches or white churches. Mm. Have very distinct styles of how they teach or pastor or preach. Yes, we've. I think we've got pretty much exactly the same landscape as you do in the US. Uh, ours is very much driven by the segregation of apartheid. Uh, actually, I drove past one of my my old church a couple of months ago. And they still had a sign up which basically says the service for white people is from seven to eight in the morning wow. and you can bring your your gardeners and domestic workers from 10 to 11. and i was like holy shit, this holy is terrible crap. holy crap <laughs> yeah but i think i might might just be a something which they might not have uh, funds to update the, the the sign or something I, I know a lot of the churches are struggling mm-hmm. but um there's also this rise, similar to in the U.S., of these mega um, prosperity-driven churches that are super charismatic and very fundamentalist. And I've recently spoken to a couple of people from those churches, and um, yeah, it's it's quite concerning the the 
ideas that they drive. We, we also recently had a, a case where a pastor convinced his congregation to take uh, insecticide oh, and no. spray that into their own faces as like a, a test of, of their faith. So, and the same guy even had, had his congregation eat dog meat. So, and I'm not saying this is at all what Christianity leads to or, or a mainstream thing, but these people accepted it because they were convinced this is what is expected of them. Mm. And uh, I think that's where spreading ideas like streets epistemology is so important in our country. Right. I also think, yeah. oh, go for it. Oh. No, and also I was just thinking that it, uh, it that I think example really illustrates how it's not about atheism, which we're so often linked to, and the whole book, um, uh, a manual for creating atheists and all that. Even though you know it's a, um, well, you can talk about that later, but it really is about challenging those ideas, uh, understanding what people believe, why they believe the pesticide is necessary to t test somebody's faith, regardless right. of what the, the church is or the ideology behind it. But is there a better way maybe to do things right. than dog meat? Also, dog meat's delicious. I don't care what people say. I'm just playing. I, oh, you I, monster. I, it kind of feeds into my excellent month. Okay, so I live pretty close to a Walmart. And that Walmart shut down, so it's no longer there. And it's kind of a cool thing, because now there's way less traffic around where I live. I feel like the area's gotten a lot safer. Everything just feels a lot nicer, just, you know, walking mm. out. Nice park, and you don't have to hear, you know, cars or traffic. It's just really, really nice. Just nice and open you, right now. You also um, bought, like, a two-year supply of taco shells or something at the closing out sale. What was that? So, yeah, there was a closing out sale that was like 90% off everything in the store. So, like, a Walmart where everything's 90% off is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And, like, <laughs> lines were just, like, all the way through the store. But, like, I'm like, I'll pick up some stuff. And I was finally able to get some, like, where's my cat? There's my cat buddy right there. Oh, Benny. Like, I was finally able to get some, like, super high-quality cat food. Like really, really, really high quality, and I open it up and I'm like, "This is basically Campbell's soup. <laughs> this is <basically laughs> stuff that I eat." <laughs> I don't think there's a difference between the two, except just smaller proportions. But um, uh, as far as things that I did that were kind of cool in the last month, I did two cool things. One, I finally have uh, a chance to really set up at the University of Kentucky, which is the school that's nearby here in Lexington. And I have friends here in Lexington that help me with my SE stuff. It's kind of cool. Um, there's a guy named Eric Green who gave me a parking pass to be able to work there. He's staff on, on school, and he hooked me up with a parking pass. Even helped me at a park. He was, like, out there looking for a spot because parking in university is always super hard. So he's like, I found a spot. And he helped me get there and park, <laughs> helped me move my stuff. He had friends that also uh, know that I do straight epistemology come and just check in on me, watch my table if I have to use the bathroom, give me water, give me food. I'm like, this is wow. like really, really high class teamwork. And I really appreciate everyone here for helping me out. But the interviews, the interviews that I got at University of Kentucky are probably some of the best ones that I've done. Uh, when I look at the quality of the questions that I ask, then compared to the first time I was out, I can tell how much nervous I was in the past because a lot of times I would try to keep, I guess, my position off the table. But a lot of the times mm. when I was on campus, I started off saying like, hey, my position is I don't know. I don't subscribe to any religion. I'm trying to figure out, you know, honestly, the best way about learning things. And I felt like I was just so comfortable about that, that the people who were in front of me were like, oh, okay, sure, yeah, I'll be happy to tell you whatever I got. And it wasn't a big issue. And I felt That's like cool. a, a really good back and forth. I had maybe seven conversations that day, and I got progressively more tired <laughs> as we went going on. So the last two were pretty bad. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll probably share those on my Patreon. But for the most part, they were like, they were, they were pretty good. But I was definitely asking like questions that were like, just throwing things out to see if they would work or not. But I've been releasing those on my YouTube channel, and um, I found a really cool way to just, you know, uh, assess how much better I've been getting at this, because now I've been doing it for about a year, and it's just cool to see that progress on my part. And then mm. the second thing that I did was did a uh, another talk at Dalton State College in Georgia, uh, this was over Skype, but it was with one of the people who are in the SE League messenger group. And he contacted me like very, very early on in my SE, you know, hobby. Uh, and he said, hey, would you like to come over to our school and do a talk? I'd be like, yeah, I would love to. 
and we came back and set up a date. And I was able to talk to his uh, Secular Student Alliance group. There was about maybe nine people there. And it was really, really fun. Um, I gave basically more or less the talk that I did when I was in Tennessee. But this was more of like a Q&A session. And I got to actually hear a lot more uh, from young people who were interested in trying to ask people questions and figure out, like, how do you even start this process? How do you even, like, figure this out? What kind of mindset do you have when you go out there? And I love questions like that. I have one more talk coming up in Newport, Kentucky, which is just below Cincinnati, uh, Ohio. And this will be at the Atheist American Atheist Convention. There'll be about 80 people there. And I'm already stressing out, but I got my slides ready. <laughs> but uh, it's really cool that, um, that I'm getting a lot more comfortable with talking about stuff like this. Because when I first started out, man, I can't tell you how nervous I was about like putting my name out there about letting people know about my position. I thought there'd be just a lot of shame behind it or a lot of public backlash. I put like an a American atheist label on the back of my car and I was worried that it'd be scratched up the next day. But like now I'm just like, it's not even a thing on my mind anymore. And it's mm. just making me a lot more, that's feeding into the way how I have conversations with people. And I'm just really happy that not only have I had gotten better at this, but people are a lot more receptive to it and accepting of my position once they understand me better rather than like this idea that they had of me. It's like, oh, Tyrone, he's so nice. He must love God. Or like, no, Tyrone's an atheist, but he's still a nice guy, and I like this guy still. I'm like, oh, man, I like you way more. <laughs> I don't know who I am. And I think that's really cool. And my mom's, who's a Jehovah Witness, is like super supportive of me. When, we, when I first told her I was an atheist, it was kind of like, mm -hmm. mm, I don't know about this. But I think being out about where you are on God is like one of the best kind of free advertisements to people who know who you are and know that they can put a face on atheism and it's the face of their friend or their son or like mm. a really family member. So um, I think it's really helpful for her and I think it's really helpful for my sister and just people at my work just all know where I'm coming from and still be willing to like have fun with me. I got friends who are Mormons at work and I'm like, oh man, like I'm Mormon from Hawaii. Like I didn't even know that's possible because <laughs> I get through all of <laughs> And I'm asking him questions, and he's asking me questions, and we go back to talking about Marvel movies. And it's just like the most free, most freeing thing about just, hey, like we all have, you know, religious or non-religious beliefs, but we can still communicate with each other. And that's what SC is all about, just mm -hmm. still good communication. And I yeah. think that's Go for it. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that um, I think one of the cool things also about putting a face on atheism, because I mean, I just said that we can ditch the the title of the book, A Manual for Creating Atheists, and that's not the main thing in SE. And I still hold by that. But I also think there is like other work to be done uh, when speaking honestly and openly and saying the word atheist, um, just because to educate people that it's not that we don't want to believe like right. just as little as they it's not like always the, the choice that i don't want to be a muslim or i don't want to be christian or i don't want this or that it's not that we don't want to believe it's just we're not convinced right mm. is like what it is for me and just to have the opportunity to educate people about that and use the word atheist when doing that i think is really valuable and we're open to having our minds be convinced. Yes. If we, we, just if we want... get evidence, it's like, okay, then. Let's assess then, it. Yeah. yeah. Let's think about it a little bit more. Okay. Like, do, uh, we, do we have the good evidence for it? Mm. All right. When I thought about doing AC, I, I, I had this phase where I had to tell literally everybody about it. Ah, and, me uh, too. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> the, the one, one, uh, one of my colleagues at work. Uh, afterwards, she came to me and she said she is so grateful that I spoke to her. And I said, what, what was it? What, what means something to you? And she said she was having doubts and she thought she was alone. Uh, mm. She had no fact that I never met anybody else who had doubts of the beliefs that she was brought up with. And it was just refreshing to her to find out that, no, she's not alone and it's okay to actually question. And... If that's all I achieve, I'm super happy just to do that. Right. And even with the conversations that I was having at UK, uh, University of Kentucky, where I knew that the conversation wasn't going so well, those were like the last two, I realized that if I just set back my goals from trying to analyze a belief or whatever or to just, hey, I'm an atheist, can I have a good conversation with you? Mm -hmm. Would you want to have that for me for like five minutes? That does way more than 
mm, a lot of people give credit to. Just having that fun conversation, short little talk with someone that you didn't think you'd ever be able to talk to face to face. Yeah. And let it end on a positive note and say, hey, thanks very much for telling me about that. I, I love that. And then move on. I think that's that's one of the great powers of just being able to talk to people. Um, one other weird thing. So I found out that Peter Bogosian didn't even want to call his book mm -hmm. a manual for creating atheists. It was his publisher that wanted to do it. And the publisher was like, man, we got to sell these copies, guy. This is a nice book, but we got to sell copies. And Peter goes like, I just don't want to make waves. I think it's going to lead to long-term problems. Like, nah, we got to sell the copies. Like, okay, fine. So they titled it that way. It's a very unfortunate name. But if you ask me, the way how I say it is mm -hmm. the, the, the true manual for creating atheists, at least for me, has always been the Bible. <laughs> huh? When I read that, Good I was one. like, oh, I got questions. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to change my mind on some things. So um, uh, anyway, we're about to open up the floodgates right now. Linda's about to roll into the uh, conversation. <laughs> Before you do it, do, do we want to do we want to take a wee little break or a shameless plug, intermission or anything like that? Ben, what's your channel? Uh, Seeds of Thought. Nice. We'll soon be active again after a big <laughs> hiatus. So very, watch very out for nice. that. Very very nice. Um, I'm my channel's called Let's Chat. Uh, feel free to comment or subscribe. We would love that. Linda, what's your channel real quick? Um, super curious. Boom. And you're, That's if you're watching me. this video, you're probably on that channel right now. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Check her out. And you've oh, got yeah, videos cool. up pretty soon, right? Well, you see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking as I was listening to you guys talking and that, I mean, the three of us almost started doing SC at the same time. So we've all like done it for about a year, but I haven't uploaded a single in the street conversation yet. The conversations that I've loaded up have been in the kitchen and they've been live streamed. Uh, and a big reason for that is that I really don't know how to edit. Um, I have taped four conversations in a park in Finland, but I just haven't had the time to edit them. And I noticed that I don't really like editing like at all. <laughs> Like, I think it's, like, the most tedious, horrible thing. And it's like, oh, I have to do it. I have to figure all of this stuff out. And ah. it just doesn't come, like, naturally or eagerly to me. But what has happened, my, my, I still feel, and, and you said, Tyrone, like, you see how you've developed and all that. And you do, like, great videos. And, and I see how your stuff is, like, developing on all levels. Like, the, the edit, the captions, the, the content, like, everything and you upload a lot, very productive. Um, yeah, and you said that you can see your development. And for me, I feel that my development since I started is that I'm becoming better at talking about street epistemology to other people and kind of convincing them to give it a go. Um, right. And that's where I get into where I went, not this weekend, but last, the QED convention. And I'm really excited about that. So I think I'm finding kind of my niche in SC, which would be more doing the talks, teaching, and... Um, yeah, enthusing people to give SE a try. Cool. So what's I don't know if I need to do videos. Hey, I'll tell you one thing. One, if you need yes. me, I would be happy to edit your videos for you because I don't actually mind it. And I have figured out a really nice template that allows me to just drag and drop stuff in. I think Ben has a background with developing programs and stuff like that. So, and I've done animation for like about eight years. So we're both like very familiar with like sitting in front of a computer and wasting like daylight hours. <laughs> <laughs> and feeling productive afterwards. Like, well, you did stuff. Meanwhile, the sun rises and sets. It's like, you missed everything. It's like, nah, we, we made, we compiled this thing and now there's no errors. That's, that's our accomplishment for the day. But I, yeah, editing does take a very, very long time. Even when I did the first video, Anthony said, you're going to be surprised how long it takes to edit even short conversations. And it mm. does. So if you want, we can work on that after offline, and I'll be happy to uh, at least output the four talks that you did. And if you're cool with that, I, I, I definitely. Work oh on man, that. I really appreciate the help, and I really felt that I got stuck because I didn't have the know-how, and I had limited time. So then I just kept on pushing it away because right. I, I I've mm -hmm. done those. I I um what's it called? I did the videos 
did the actual conversations like it's at least two months ago. Right. So of, of course I have had like evenings and stuff. And well, I was in the cabin in Lapland. I didn't really have access to electricity in the same way as I would at home. But of course there were opportunities if I would have the know-how and the, the want to actually sit and do it. But it's for me, it's like picking, I don't know, what, what's the word? Something really awful that you right. have to do. So, some, so yeah, some, I really appreciate the help so I can move forward with that I, because now I'm just stuck. Doing SE with just yourself versus working with a team of people is monumentally completely different things. And the whole point Absolutely. of the league, the point of the league is to find a group of people that are willing to help you out. Like when I did the talk at Dalton, I was helping out another guy who wanted to just have people talk to him or his group about S, uh, street epistemology. When Ben did his talk or did his survey, Ben, your survey is really popular. I've seen other people use it in their videos. Uh, but it's just this feedback center and a helping center. And I think the whole point of the league is that you're not alone when you do street epistemology. You're not just mm -hmm. one person with a camera, mm -hmm. part of a group, a group of losers. <laughs> a league of yeah. well. And one, uh, one, one thing gonna... that I would like to put out there that I would um, like to help other people with, um, and I hope somebody takes me up on this, that if you are giving talks, if you're doing anything publicly with SC, I really like giving feedback, doing hangouts with stuff like that because that's where I have uh, experience in like um, watching people perform and helping them do it better or not perform but giving talks and stuff like that like okay. putting people at ease if they think stuff like that is like um, nerve-wracking and maybe going through the 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 talk as um, it is being um, created oh, did that make did sense you, did you, <laughs> no it makes sense <laughs> yeah, did you get an opportunity to do that at QED did some well, people kind of, speak to you? Well, I kind of bounced in with this T-shirt. Um, it's So it's a two-day conference. It started on uh, Saturday morning. What's the T-shirt say? Uh, the, What's the T-shirt say? It says, Street, Street epistemology. Epistemologist. Let's examine how we know what we know. I love that. I like that. How yeah, we I think know. it's a really good like T-shirt. That. Good. I know and where you got that. <laughs> <laughs> From Anthony Magnabosco, thank you so much. He was giving them out in Norway. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, and I wore this um, T-shirt for four days. Okay. Um, so I was wearing nothing else during this um, uh, conference. It was like two days with the like talks, but before that there was like a a, a space quiz, quiz, like a social gathering where they like ask questions about yeah, you. you you, you you become a team and then you um they ask questions about space and conspiracy theory and astrophysics and physics and stuff i got all the physics questions almost all of them right mm -hmm. who knew um uh, and then <laughs> that was a lot of fun um yeah so it went to the point where people were asking me like don't you have any other clothes but then again <laughs> people were, <laughs> were intrigued by the the title street epistemologist and um that would um start really good conversations where i got to practice my um elevator pitch my a little bit longer like oh, let's wow. talk about se and then like it even went to like hour-long conversations with people about the possibilities um within se and if we experiment with it and how it is a conversational tool and how it can help um, people think in a not so polarized manner and find nuance and like the whole tool for world peace. Um, so like all those kinds of different types of conversations, um, cause that's how I think of street epistemology. It's a, it's a dialectic that will help us, you know, become more, um, peaceful with each other. So help um, me out. where was QED? How did you get there? You. How long did it last? Like, what were the kind of people there, the events there? Like, if as I know nothing about QED, walk me through it. Uh, yeah. I, and I saw you hanging out with a very weird looking dude. He, he kind of looks like a <laughs> Disney movie villain. Oh, was that about? Aaron, Aaron. Yeah, Aaron had a, um, a lecture on Thursday. So that was prior to the, the conference. But it, okay, QED is Question, Explore, Discover. It's a skeptic conference. <laughs> Q E D. I should anyway. So <laughs> and it's in Manchester in the UK. Um, it was held um, the two days of the like actual conference were the thirteenth and fourteenth. The space quiz was on the twelfth, and um, Aaron Ra spoke on the eleventh. So 
So I went back to the front <laughs> there. Um, yeah. Uh, what, was, what was the other question? Now I got all sidetracked. Uh, what kind of events or speakers were there? Was it st strictly just for secular activities or were there like anti-science? You said there was conspiracy theorists there as well. What's going on? Well, it's a skeptic convention or a skeptic mm -hmm. conference. So skeptics unite. It begins Saturday morning, nine o'clock. Everybody gathers into this big um, like hall. Okay. Um, and it begins with this video. Um, a fantastic video. I'm going to link it in the description because it's available on YouTube for anybody to watch. It was the coolest thing I've seen in a long, long while. And I'm sitting there all excited with my little booklet. You get this booklet with the program. Oh, it's, a it's got your nice. Yeah, so it's got the program inside. So you've got it with you all the time. So you can like choose which talk you want to go to. And it's got your name on it so everybody can see who you are. They also see that you're a part of the like conference. So it's really easy to talk to anybody at any point, mm. anywhere, like queuing for a beer or outside in the smoking section or uh, waiting in line to get into a talk. People will for be Americans, like, oh, so what? For Americans, Sorry. queuing for a beer means you're waiting in line. <laughs> <Just help them>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Um, uh, yeah, so it begins with a video um, where they had done like a parody, not a parody, they used like they, um, what's it called? You imitate? Okay. David mm -hmm. David Attenborough. And David Att Attenborough <laughs> did this um, talk or like was explaining about the skeptic um, species and how they migrate <laughs> once a year to come to QED at Manchester, the biggest skeptic conference in the world. Oh, it was so good. So that video will be linked. Just watch it. It's uh, hilarious. Um, I at least, I am definitely um, identifying as a skeptic uh, species of the skeptic <laughs> species. You're a skeptic, yeah. Yeah, so it starts like really fun, um, a lot of anticipation, a lot of laughing in the audience and crying and so on and so forth. Um, and then I just met like really cool people everywhere I turned. There was somebody interesting who had something interesting to say. And just this um, mindset of more like questioning, it, it kind of felt like people were kind of, um, naturally doing SE or at least like just asking a lot of question questions mm. and challenging what I was kind of there to sell because I did go there with the whole thing like oh, I want to promote street epistemology and what was cool was that Anthony did speak at that convention last year uh, so some people uh, recognized it and said like, oh that was really cool could you tell me more about it that and then works. there were a lot of other people's people that just kept on seeing me in the same t-shirt and then eventually they asked like so what is that how do you even say it? <laughs> and that is how the conversation. <laughs> yeah. cool. And that's how the conversations would um, begin. Um, yeah, and so it, they've got like four different like spaces where there are talks and workshops and stuff at the conference. So you kind of like have to choose. You can't mm -hmm. watch everything. Mm -hmm. And initially, I was like, oh no, but I would really like to see that critical thinking thing and see that other neuroscientist thing. But they're going on at the same time. Actually, those two weren't at the same time. I got to see them both. But anyway. But the thing that was good that, that uh, in between talks, when you're queuing for the beer or something, and it was really casual and nice and people don't get like sloppy drunk. It's just like a nice kind of chill, um, sipping on a beer kind of fun uh, drinking. Um, so, yeah, when you're waiting in that queue, you, you'll ask the person, so what did you see and how was that? And if you're lucky, they went to something else. Or I don't know. If they went to something else, you, you get to hear about that from their perspective. Mm. And if they went to the same thing as you, you can start talking about it and like nitpicking it and like asking wow. questions about it. And like, this is what I thought. And I didn't really agree with that. And like, you know, I think that's really cool. Skeptics unite. I felt like I was free. It's really <laughs> risky to be I part of groups people. like that. Oh, I've, yeah. I found that out. I also joined this a local skeptics group skeptics in the pub and we yeah. have a meet up every two weeks and it's just like the highlight of my calendar really and it's what i found is it everyday conversation tends to become boring it's really nice to have these conversations where you're challenged and you're exposed to new ideas yeah. and just to go back to the office and discuss you know how the team did over the weekend that just doesn't do it anymore for you i don't know if you guys had the same experience <laughs> 
No, that's that's absolutely true. I think if I strongly encourage joining like a local humanist free thought or skeptics group if you can. Um, I think we have three great examples because Linda goes out to these conventions where she can finally like let loose, and then you have this local meetup group that you can go to, Ben. And then for me, uh, I have not so much that in Kentucky, in the heart of Kentucky. So what I do is like I try to have my sessions with street epistemology. That tends to be sort of my outlet. And then I meet with you guys on the internet. So like whatever situation that you're in, you could always find a group that's willing to talk to you about the things that you believe in. And even on Discord, uh, we have like these like role play sessions where we can like freely talk afterwards or before or even during the, to- the, 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 the acting that we do. where we, we just try to engage in street epistemology with each other and then hang out and play video games and talk about like issues that we're going through with regard to our more rational mindset. I think there are a lot mm-hmm. of avenues, way more than ever before, if you just want to have an outlet to talk to and find people that think the same way you do. Mm-hmm. And I thought or it was ab- and challenge that. Sorry, my bad. My bad. <laughs> and I thought it was just like wonderful. I felt completely at home and at ease because we were constantly we at that convention I felt it almost felt like a little festival because the 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 atmosphere there was really like liberating free and like we were all mm. playing and having fun together. I nice. liked that aspect of it. Um and then I liked that very rarely did we start with, hello, my name is Linda, I come from Finland, and, and all that kind of small talk thing that yeah. I as an introvert find kind of um, strange to do. I don't always get it, like why are we doing this? Right. And there I felt like we just jumped into conversation and then the whole, oh, so you're so and so and you come from there and that makes sense because now we're talking about something where it's relevant for us to exchange yeah. our life stro- stories and I think kind of like I guess I'm used to in other situations that the whole life story comes first and then people start talking about things that are important to them I like this way much better but of course we're at a convention so we t- we're thinking about ideas the whole time but I really liked that and it felt so comfortable mm. and I haven't just had that really well, maybe That's the so first cool. time in Norway with the skeptics there, but I didn't even know. I feel like I didn't even know that this this um, way of being existed. Like it's you have to watch the second time being there. That's that's crazy. <laughs> Sorry, that's, what? That was your second time being there, and you still felt like... no, 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 no. My first time at QED. Oh, okay. I was talking about the time in uh, Norway where I went to the uh, skeptics uh, in the pub in Oslo. I was my guess. first experience with like a group of kind of skeptic people that are there to question. And um, I remember saying this to Anthony too, that I just, I'm, I feel like, wow, like where have I been and what have I been doing? And like, I, I can't describe it, but it was like all mm. of a sudden, like everybody's like uh, rational, oh, rational is a bad word. It's something else. It's that then they're, they're not like a hundred percent there. Like, <laughs> This is the way it is. And they're not like defending ideas to the death. It's like, oh, so you see this differently? Oh, well, tell tell me about that because, you know, I've got good reasons. So I'll tell you my reasons. And it's kind of, it's like working on the problems for reals. It was interesting the whole time. I was Mm. not bored, not one single second. I could have gone for a week doing that. Excellent. Very cool. What else did I want to say? (laughs) Um... I feel like I, I started by going like, yeah, I think I'm, my, my skill is speaking like really well about SE, but I feel like now that I'm trying to do it, it's all over the place. <laughs> no, it's so right. there, go figure. It's all right. I don't know what happened. <laughs> you know something I'd be really interested in seeing? Is, oh, I had something I wanted to say, but I keep on forgetting it. Sorry, have what? You, have you live streamed or live streamed yourself talking about the convention to put up on your channel because I would love to see like just a Linda Mako yeah, free flowing free flow <laughs> I did at the the QED event just taking your yeah. time and that'd be really really cool and I think it'd be mm. a really strong recommendation for other people who are in the area to be able to check it out themselves and you're in Finland you went down to Manchester in my yeah. mind I'm jumping three different worlds apart but for you I guess it's like not too long of a drive right oh. or you see, well, I love okay. to travel and I love going to, um, I, but before like doing these skeptic things, I've been going to watch like a, a scientist, like mm-hmm. the great Richard Dawkins talk uh, or 
uh, Brian Cox and his show. And there it's like you're the audience and then you're watching the show and the scientists saying brilliant stuff. But this was different. Both like Anthony's talk and the the skeptic convention in Manchester at QED, which are my two experiences where I go specifically to, to engage with skeptics. It was different. We were engaging. We were thinking. It was different because we all got to talk about it afterwards. And yeah, it was that. We got to talk about it. So there were like conversations happening everywhere and oh, and there was so much food food for thought and there was music and comedy, but every everything had that little kind of either science seat flair or that like question, discover, cool, explore. I said them in the wrong order, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but just that oh, feeling that of, of wonder and question, question, explore, discover. Very nice. Friends. Nice. Oh, it was the perfect place for me. Yeah, and I thought I wrote down here at, that um, I might have learnt something, and that was the best thing. I really feel like when people are open like that and interested like that and want to explore and learn things and question, it's just the best environment for learning. I had so many like ah oh, moments. It was like everybody was seeing me too, and then I could see <laughs> them back, <laughs> and uh, it was so much fun. And and also yeah. having the tool tool in my toolbox of SE, I felt was really cool. I felt like I could like um, really get to understand the other person's point of view. And I think this was so funny because we were all kind of like almost thinking the same way. We had the same kind of attitude, I guess, more. Mm. So when our, our ideas might have differed or somebody was um, maybe not understanding what street epistemology is, I used street epistemology to get the the idea across <laughs> better so it was kind Jeez. of like this meta thing where i felt that having street epistemology and talking to skeptics using street epistemology kind of like it's not like it's a weapon or anything it's just a way of talking really <laughs> do you think anyone who watched you at the or or talk, spoke with you felt more encouraged to uh employ street epistemology themselves and i guess yes. if anyone's like watching this video now what would you tell them that you told people at QED? What I would tell them that I told the people at QED? To encourage what? them to no, try out and see themselves. Like, what was the pitch to encourage people? Well, I guess for me, it's not so much the pitch. It's like really listening to the person I'm talking to and trying to uh, understand them and how it would be valuable for them. And then, like, helping them see where they could maybe use it and then... Um, because you can use SE so many different ways, as we um, see every week now on YouTube and different styles. And I think we, we can use SE in negotiations. We can use it at work. We can use it um, when we order food. We, <laughs> there, you can use SE we, anywhere we, the way I see it. Yeah. <laughs> I would like, like way, some fries, please. But I don't know. Do the way I you want really fries? <laughs> hmm, how often am I do I want fries right now? You tell me. I don't know, sir. Meet him I think that's all to asking the waiter. So, what's your best dish at the restaurant? Is that really yeah, the decision that? How do you know? That? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, something that I would just like to add to to what you have to say, Linda. I think uh, a lot of people are intimidated by the idea of um, trying out skepticism, trying out something like street epistemology, uh, because you look at people who you admire, somebody like Anthony Magna Bosco, or maybe a skeptic like uh, Matt Delahunty, and you're just amazed. These guys, the ideas they have, how easily it flows from them. And uh, remember, you have to start somewhere. Uh, and what yeah. I found, what, what AC has really imprinted on me is the value of when you go somewhere, being inquisitive and asking questions. When I went to my, my first skeptic meetup, I was terrified. I thought all of these people have this completely different mindset and they're going to see straight through me and think I'm a poser. But uh, when you go in there and you ask questions uh, and it, it basically automatically gets you to engage and it gets the people you speak to to engage with you. And it's such a rewarding experience. Um, really, just anybody who's never tried it, Go out and just mm. ask questions. Yeah. It's the best thing that you can do. It's really fun. Uh, something I worry about is a language barrier. I don't know if, or like, you know, the facial, but language barrier, all that stuff. Ben, do you have any tips? If I'm talking to someone who might, for example, only speak Afrikaans, how can I get to them? What's like a good keyword that I might be able to use to get through to a person like that? Uh, buy a donkey. 
<laughs> what? What? what does that mean <laughs> first you have to say it it's literally you say buy a donkey okay buy a donkey buy, can buy you say that yeah buy a donkey yes it's, thank you very much <laughs> see in, in afrikaans politeness is key so so you need to be always say thank you very much buy what a is, donkey oh is that thank you very much <gasps> yes very very cool i'm writing that down Pretty buy nice. a donkey by a donkey. By a donkey you guys ben. have perfect pronunciation. I am just, a donkey. I'm astounded. You know what's crazy is I met a guy from Pretoria in Le in Lexington. Oh, dude, That's I crazy. I enjoy that conversation so much. Really? Because <laughs> I'm going to be posting that in like about two weeks, and I'm really excited because I was like, my friend Ben Diesel's from. <laughs> this is so crazy right now. But he's like, who's who's Ben Diesel? It's like, don't worry about it. Let's keep talking. About <laughs> Really cool dude, though. Um, mm. All right, so we're getting near the end of the show. Is there? Well, let's do one final round. Um, we're gonna go and basically say, "Hey, Ben, thank you so much for telling me about the Alpha, uh, uh, the community event that's held by pastors in South Africa, allowing kids to question their beliefs." And I think you'll be an absolute, absolutely excellent asset in that kind of development. And I hope you get a lot out of it too. Um, I'm really looking forward to if you can get like any kind of recorded talks out of that. It'd be really, really great. And then yeah. Linda, you sound like you had a wonderful competition or uh, convention at, in Manchester <laughs> for QED. I think that was really, really cool. And I love the enthusiasm. And I think you really touched a lot of people with regard to why they should be interested in talking to people about how they came to their beliefs. And I think that's always a useful thing, especially at a skeptics conversation. Because a lot of people will call themselves skeptics, well, but not really engage in that stuff. So. Well, I, actually, actually, now I don't think that the thing that I did there with SC and the interest that I kind of created towards SC wasn't about people having to um, question their beliefs, but rather see that there is another way to c communicate uh, about mm -hmm. beliefs, about opposing beliefs, a way to um, have conversations without it turning into a debate. This is mm -hmm. what I think is yes. most um, valuable for skeptics and how skeptics can go out and be like great skeptics and have fun talking mm -hmm. to people um, and maybe make this movement um, spread even quicker. If right. we get all the skeptics on board and they're having fun with it, um, I, yeah, I think it's great. <laughs> I'm going to throw one weird thing that I just had. I had a random thought. Maybe, and yeah. we might be able to get into this later, but like SE is always based on the Socratic method for me, or like Socratic examination. And I found that like the difference between like the Socratic method versus SE street epistemology is that when you're using the Socratic method, you tend to be trying to teach someone something. Like you try to be like, my position is I'm right, and I'm asking you questions so that you can yes. see my. Yes, you've already got a destination in mind. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Whereas SE is very much, this is a conversation that I'm trying to have with you. And I might learn way more from it from just asking questions from you. But what we're trying to do is put the evidence on the table and see if it's reliable. If it is, holy crap, I'm following that because you just showed mm -hmm. me something awesome. And I think that more evenness as you approach the conversation is what makes SC really distinct. And I think it was the mm -hmm. missing key ingredient that we've probably been missing since like 400 BC. Like <laughs> yeah. we need just being able to meet on even ground. What do you think? And, and also the whole thing about um, really trying to listen and understand what the person is saying, going with their definitions, going with their understanding of their belief. They're, mm. they're expressing what they believe. My job is to understand what they're saying, um, not to impose my ideas of the words they're using or, or something else or this concept. Uh, like example with you, Tyrone, when, when you went to the, the ARC uh, encounter and the guy is like, are you, are you atheist? And we see already that he has an idea that, right. that is not matching with you. So he, he was actually doing kind of good SE on you in that p moment also because he then, or you, you helped him do that because then he realized he needed to ask you a little bit more to understand what your right. position really is, what you mean by atheist. That's the most important thing, not what he thinks atheism is. If we are talking about you or right. me, then it's if what I think and my definitions. And also with SE and the, the dialectic, I think the really cool thing is to like say it back to the person so that they feel that they are heard <sighs> and they can hear it themselves and they can correct it I think is the best thing I was doing that the whole weekend here and there with different things when I was trying to understand what they what what anybody was saying to me about anything that they had learned 
it was saying it back and going like, did I understand that? And then I feel I get it more. Like they are hearing it and I hear it more. And then I learn more from them than right. if I would just be making up my own ideas as I'm just listening to somebody kind of. Right, <laughs> yeah. right, right, right. Like, like really precise listening. That's when we Please. know that we're talking, we're working together. We're not just butting heads or, or maybe not even talking the same thing, you know, like doing this thing. This? <laughs> I'm talking about the same this, thing. Oh, we God, we thought you know ASL. We need to talk like this and not like this. <laughs> Very cool. Yes, SC, and this is um Socratic method, maybe. <laughs> or yeah, I think it might be pretty close. Ben, you got mm -hmm. any closing thoughts before we uh, yeah. close up? Just want to add to what Linda said. Um, I asked a question at, at one of the sessions at Alpha, and the one girl explained how she knows that she's following the true God. And she explained that it's when you, you can live your life fully. And I just repeated, I'm like, so when you live your life fully, does that mean you're serving the right God? And she said, I've never said that aloud before. Ooh. I need to go think about this. Very and I'm just like, good. yes, that is Very exactly <laughs> what needs to happen. This is the best. Um, yeah. And if anybody, like, I think this is a good place if you are interested in engaging with, with people who are religious, um, and you want to try and promote some more critical <clears throat> thinking, uh, Alpha is a good place to do it. It's it's there. Wow. Way that actually, the course promotes openness, a non-judgmental approach. Uh, I dropped the atheist bomb in our very first session there, and I didn't have any issues, which I thought I was going to basically empty the table when I do that. I bet they're uh, yeah, if, if you're interested in, in looking at it, um, th there's a website. Just Google Try Alpha, uh, Try Alpha. Basically, whenever there's a course that where they use this this um, material, somebody registers it and they've got a map up uh, of the entire world where people are hosting these courses. And wow. it's, it's usually open, it's for free. So it's it's worthwhile. Like, expose yourself to some other, other ideas. Go and um, model openness and maybe get somebody to think a bit differently about what they believe. That was so great. You guys really are some of my best friends in the world. This is really, really oh. great. I can't imagine oh, you too. I could have a really fun conversation with you guys. I love you guys. But we got to end. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Can I please say a, a quick... <laughs> I just destroyed my mind. I wanted to say one more thing about QED. I wanted to thank all the organizers <laughs> for it because okay, it was yeah. so great. And like stuff like there was, do you know Doctor Who? I the know the show? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they had like a, a, a police box. Oh, wow. That's great. Like the in TARDIS? front of the, sorry? The TARDIS? Yeah, the TARDIS. Oh, yeah. That's what? The police box? Yes. Is that called the, oh. So constantly learning. I didn't know what it was called other than the police box, but it was really cool because it looked really like yeah, like, like oh, some Doctor Who and everything. Me, uh, Linda, yes. Linda, that's just <laughs> how, how British telephone boxes look. Do they still but have... it was, but it was Doctor Who's. Oh, it no. was really. Do they have? Do they have legitimate <laughs> phone boxes in in England since you were there? Like, do they still exist? Like phone booths? The red they ones, got... yeah. Whoa, they got rid of all of them in the U.S. There's like only like I, two, more or less. I saw three on the way to the convention. Wow, from the that's impressive. Yes. Wow, that's cool and quaint. I love that. Yeah. Anyway, we're closing up the show. I hope everyone had a good time. Thank you for listening to us. Let's, before we end, we got two things we got to do. First is review goals. Ben, did you accomplish your goal? I did. I, I got some help from a friend. And we can all say, <laughs> buy a donkey. Buy a donkey. Thank you for teaching me that. That's so, that's so funny because I was thinking that I got Ben to take care of my goal because you did a you did a, like a comprised version of what I said where I think it, <laughs> you, you took down the like, the like, uh, what's it called? Oh my gosh, I can't I speak anymore. Helped you, like the, <laughs> you helped <laughs> me. Man. Wiggly fingers. <laughs> ben, you, you taught me something, Linda. You then that helped me express that SE, you don't have to like go full force and do like something super magnificent. You just have to start strike up strike up a conversation. Okay, I can't talk today. I don't know what's going on. Sorry, guys. It's the excitement. Okay. It's I, the hey, excitement. Say, ben, you got a point for completing your goal. That gives you up to two points this year. 
You're at Happy Humans number two. Two points. Happy Humans, let's go. But you're Happy Humans. <laughs> oh, I'm, my Happy Humans. You. You're Casual Canines. Casual Ooh. Canines, let's go. Oh, my gosh. Well, Linda, so did you accomplish your goal for the talk today, which was... Yes, with help, help of culture. Ben. Okay. Hey, we got a pro tip. We got a pro teamwork. And that's what this is all about. We will know definitely next time when okay. we get feedback. So that gives Nordic Nekos two points for this year so far. Nordic Nekos! Ow! All right. Ow! Guys, I'm a little, <laughs> I'm not sad. I'm not sad. I'm just more motivated. I said I'd get to level 20, but you know yeah. what? That boss battle was a little bit more frustrating. Uh, it spawned a bunch of little smaller bosses when I got it down to about a quarter health. And I thought, that's unfair. I didn't know where that was coming from. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to, I'm not giving up. I'm going to go back to the the grasslands and just like wail <laughs> some level two to threes again. Just bring up the AXP. Just make sure my controls are good. I'm thinking if I just come out with a good mindset, I won't lose. And I'm just going to probably stock up some potions. I think if I do that, everything should be okay. I think that's the goal. So level 17, uh, no point today, but you know what? I'm going to keep working on it. That puts everyone well on. Thank you. That puts everyone on an even playing field at two points apiece till the end of the year. Let's go, everybody. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. All right. <laughs> Let's close out the show with our catchphrase. <laughs> and blue. Are you guys ready? Three, two, one. I am both, I am both, both rubber, rubber and, and blue. blue. Yay. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.